toppled over by the tornado, narrowly missing several of the headstones. After an EF2 tornado slammed into a portion of town. So what happens if your cemetery gets hit by a tornado like this one? Let's talk about what you do next. I literally just got home from a trip out of state and I checked my email and I saw that a cemetery that I've worked in and I've cleaned in before had just gotten hit by a tornado like two days before. And the cemetery manager reached out to me to see what do we need to do? What are the next steps? So I thought you all are gonna want this help too. So you see behind me, you see all of this damage that's going on. You have all these trees down. So what do you do as your next steps to make sure that you can get the cemetery back and cleaned up safely? So step one, the storm is over, everyone's safe. You take care of yourself first, then we worry about the cemetery. So now we're out in the cemetery. What are we gonna do out here? Well, you see the biggest thing that we've got right now is all of the tree damage that's down. We're gonna look for power lines. We're gonna look for anything like that that might damage us. Right over here, there's crews working. There's crews working over here, working to make sure that the power lines are back and they're safe and getting people's power restored. But cemeteries, the first thing that people are gonna wanna do is they're gonna wanna come out here and check on their relatives' gravestones and they're gonna wanna make sure that they're okay and they're gonna try and upright them and they might hurt themselves. So if you're a cemetery manager, a trustee, a volunteer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're out there, that you're probably even blocking it off and trying to manage some of that flow of people. But let's say that you can't. Let's say that people have come in and already tried to actively do things. You wanna distract them. A lot of times volunteers can get themselves in harm's way and hurt themselves, so giving them other tasks. Look around, there are branches everywhere. They're probably gonna come through with professional crews here, they're gonna have uh, arborists, tree workers that are gonna come through and they're gonna clean this up. There's gonna be city staff that are involved with that, but there's always cleanup. And so you can help distract your volunteers away from some of the headstones by helping them pick up some of the things in the cemetery. So what happens now? Headstones get put back up, right? No, not just yet. We need to document. We need to document everything. It's super important that we spend the time documenting the damage first and recording that before we get to the work because we need to make sure that we have it documented where everything is laying, the damage that was incurred by that, so on and so forth. Okay, but how do you actually get that recorded? Check the link in my bio, I've got a form for you. It was put together by the National Park Service. The NCPTT has a document that they put together and a website to help you with cemetery assessment in times of natural disaster, so check that out. So the trees are, of course, they all get picked up. Well, that one's pinched beneath this headstone. Right now, this is the safest place for this headstone is right here. This is a very large granite headstone, and it's so large that this is probably well over a ton in weight. It would hurt you to move this. This is the time to document and then get a professional engaged with that. This is the time to go out and find the conservator in your area that knows how to do this and to get things stabilized. You're not gonna work to put things back up just yet. So this particular headstone, I can see that this base is still in great shape. Like it hasn't moved. We just need to put this back up. That's totally doable. And if you're a volunteer that's been trained in that, that's great. You might be able to help out. Otherwise, get in touch with a conservator in your area. There's gonna be plenty of people out there to help you out. I'm gonna give you another example right here. This one looks like you could just lift it up back in place, but you know what? This one is also really heavy, so you don't wanna do that. So right here, it looks like two strong people could go and lift this up. Don't do that. You'll probably throw your back out. The other thing is you'll chip some of the stone or potentially chip some of the stone. So this base does seem to be in good shape. It might be leaning, it might need to reset. There's a concrete foundation below it, but this is one where you don't necessarily wanna to touch that right away. You need lifting and rigging. Yes, I can plug my class. I have a class on cemetery conservation. If you wanna learn how to do that, you wanna learn how to do this um, as a volunteer, I've got a class. Check the link in my bio, link down below, and you can take a look at that if you wanna get involved as a volunteer. So certainly there's resources like that out there. So the National Park Service, NCPTT, has an assessment form that you can utilize to make sure that you've documented things properly. Um, if you're a municipality, you probably have some of that disaster planning put together. Um, but the first step is just make sure that you document everything and then make a phone call to your local conservator. Figure out what you need to do. You can mobilize your volunteers. You can do lots of cemetery cleanup. Right now for me, it's spring. So there's lots of cemetery cleanups out there already. So, you know, getting the cemetery picked up, it's a great way to engage your volunteers. It's a disaster, it sucks, it's not a good situation, 
but you can mobilize your volunteers and that's great. So utilize those tools that are available to you. So one of the things that we do not wanna do in this situation besides stand out in the rain like I'm doing right now, so what we do not wanna do is we don't wanna just move fragments of stones that have broken. So I've time warped to another cemetery that's about a mile away from there that I'm working on right now. And one of the issues that I've got is this. So this stone is something that's been bothering me for about a year now. And I saw this a couple years ago, but somebody at some point in time decided that they wanted to put this stone against this tree because it broke. What you do not want to do in the situation when you have a disaster is move stones like this. If they broke, that sucks, right? That's sad, that's an unfortunate situation, but we don't want to move them away from the grave site unless you've documented it. If you've documented it and you're super confident in that, maybe you could consider that, but I would prefer that you leave them in place. You can stabilize them, right? Use proper techniques to stabilize them. Maybe just get them up off the ground, but don't move them out of the place because the situation with this one, I do not know where this one goes. This cemetery does not have a good map for it. And I don't know where I'm supposed to put this one back. So in your disaster, it's terrible, but don't move it out of the way because the, the challenges that I face is not knowing where this goes. So for you all, don't do this. Don't move them out of place because that's the biggest challenge that I have. I can fix that, but I don't know where to put it. So now let's time warp back about a mile over there to the other cemetery that actually had the tornado. Here, where I've been working, no issues. Over there, problem. So let's take a look at what some of the other issues are in this particular cemetery to see what other steps might be involved in getting this cleaned up and back in place. So if you look at some of these white marbles that are behind me here, I cleaned those and some of the gray marbles back up there, that's work that I did. This one, I didn't clean. I don't remember why I didn't clean it, but I didn't. This one's on the ground. So what would I do if I was coming in here doing an assessment and looking at something like this? And let's say that you know that your organization isn't gonna be able to get these back up right away, um, but you don't wanna leave it laying here. Um, so what would I do? So one, I'm looking at the base. This is delaminated limestone that's here. And it frankly, it just needs a replacement for the base but it's fine, it's in the ground, leave it there. This is safe because it's fallen over. There's no harm that's going to be done by leaving it there, but what's going to happen is it will get dirty because it's laying in the dirt and it's marble. And so having extra moisture coming up from the ground and getting into that left over a period of time, a long period of time, it can help to deteriorate that stone. So what I would do if I'm coming in here and I know that I'm not going to be able to move this out of the way and get it reset in a reasonable amount of time, I would come in here with blocks, let's just say two by fours or some you know, heavy material that I would lay in front of that. So I'm not even going to rig this. There's no reason to bring in a hoist on this. I can roll this. So if I have material that I've stacked here to get this up out of the dirt, it's going to allow me to do that. If you want to roll something like this, it's already going downhill. You all there at the camera, you're probably three, four feet down from where this one is at right now. If I come around to the other side, I can move this, right? One hand, I can pull up on that. This can sit on blocks right there, and then it's going to be up and out of the dirt, and you're going to be in a better spot, and it's going to be easier to work with once you do get the opportunity to come back and reset this. But I do want to make sure that you've taken the photos and documented this because I can see here there's some uh, old compound, old repair that's sitting right here. This is delaminated and the reason this went over, I don't see any sticks around here, but crazy high winds. So certainly something could have impacted this and then blown away because I do see impacts right here. So what I do see all along the ground is certainly, you know, embedded embedded wood, embedded branches. So there's definitely some, some things that, that happened here. But why did this go over and other ones didn't? It's possible that it's just simply the delamination of the base. It didn't have any more support or stability and maybe it was rocking. So I can make some of those assumptions. I really have no idea. I wasn't here when the storm came through, but it's important to see that this is delaminated and you can make some assumptions for that. But ultimately what we wanna do is stabilize things. And to stabilize this, get your lumber out there, roll it onto that, Make sure that it's supported. These are two pieces, so you want to support each one of them separately. You don't want to create some weird tension on that. And just get it up on blocks and make sure that it's out of the dirt and out of the moisture. 
So I believe I'm coming out here with the city maybe this next week. Um, I've already been in email communication. They had messaged me and asked what resources that I had available. So it's the same resources that I have to you. I'll put the link in the description for what I've got. It's a link to a website that the NCPTT, the National Park Service has available for their disaster assessment. And there's also a form that goes along with that and helps you document what's going on with that. And we can talk about maybe when we come back out here, maybe there's gonna be some more work to do, but for the day one, I want you to think about what you need to do to get your cemetery safe and cleaned up. When I look around here, it's rough, but it's mostly branches and there's not that many headstones that are impacted by it, which is amazing. But we need to think about what we need to do to make these safe. So any more questions, if you're interested in learning how to do this, I do have a class available. Check the link in my description, the link in my bio. You can learn how to upright these types of things as a volunteer. Uh, but in something that's large like this, and there's a lot going on, um, you probably want to call a professional conservator. But if you don't have those resources available to you, um, certainly take a look at the class that I've got available to you. Um, that can help um, reinforce some of the knowledge that maybe your volunteer group already has and help um, get your cemetery back up. There, we talk about cemetery maintenance. We talk about cemetery planning and layout. And some of those things will come into play when we look at what's going on out here. So, so I hope this was helpful. Maybe this turns into part two, three, ten. I don't know, because maybe we come back out here and do some work. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.